talk about consideration now. So we'll run through this. And I'm seeing this out of uh, the restatement um, of contracts, which to you guys means nothing other than the fact that this is the contract law across the United States. To constitute consideration, a performance to return for a promise must be bargained for. A performance to return a promise is bargained for if it is sought by the promisor in exchange for his promise and is given by the promisee in exchange for that promise. There has to be given, when you make a promise, okay, when you enter into a contract, there has to be something given for it, bottom line. The performance may consist of an act other than a promise, a forbearance, the creation, modification, and destruction of a legal relationship. The performance to return a promise may be given to the promisor or some other person and may be given by the, by the promisee or some other person. Okay, you guys can have employees and that type of thing, give those. Um, and then Black's Law, some right, interest, profit, or benefit accruing to one party or some forbearance, detriment, loss, or responsibility given, suffered, or undertaken by the other. Something for a contract. This is how I talk about contracts. I, I was talking to Sherry and we had the opportunity to be on Block Talk Radio with Sherry and the B team, which thank you very much, I really appreciate that. Um, but one of the things I told in the story about my kids, okay, my kids are minors, so I have, my kids are nine and, and younger. Just tell you a little about my family quick, which I told you at the beginning. I have three boys, nine, and then I have a twin boy set of boys that are seven, and then I have a twin set of girls that are four. So that's my family in a nutshell. My wife goes crazy at home. That's why I'm here. But what we do is our boys, because we have three of them, they enter these little promises and all this other stuff that if you do this for me, then I'm going to do this for you. If you play Star Wars with me, then I'll play football with you. I'm sure you kids do the same thing. And it ends up that they don't play football because they just played Star Wars and they had too much fun. So what I did is I said, I taught my kids about contracts. Granted, they're minors, so they're not binding, but still. And we determined, we talked about consideration. If you make a promise for a promise, if you promise to play Star Wars, then you have to play football because that is the promise of the promise, right? Does that make sense? Does that help with what this consideration is? My wife hates this because then she has to act as judge and jury when the kids come in. I, I kind of talk through them a little bit. And I don't tell my wife I told you guys about that. She'll get really <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to the shoving stuff up your nose case. Was there consideration in that case? You guys remember that there was that advertisement, right? That if you do X amount three times a week and, and you get the flu, you get paid 100 bucks. She testified that she did it. Was there consideration? There's offer, there's acceptance, but was there consideration? Did it form a contract? Anybody says yes? Anybody says no? Amy that doesn't really even care and wants to move on. I'll say yes, but I don't understand why. Okay. Well, the court said that there was consideration. They determined that the purchasing and or using the smoke wall constitute consideration because there was no benefit to the company for them using it. 
for the customer relying on the procedures provided in the advertisement. There's no benefit for the company for them relying on those procedures. It really was a detriment to the customer. The customer had to go through and do that type of thing. All right. All right, this is kind of an interesting case. Um, this is why I actually got this book here today, but this is Harris versus Time. Time distributed a mass mailing in an envelope that purported to give an attorney's son a new calculator watch if he opened the envelope. And the you know, little envelope thing that said, hey, new watch if you open this envelope. <laughs> the kid opened the envelope. I think this kid was five or seven or something. The offer actually required that he, the son place a subscription order to get the new watch. But it said, hey, you can get 66% off your subscription. It was a really good deal. It said it may be tax deductible. The attorney demanded the watch. Time refused, again, his attorney's son. And you know what the attorney did? He brought a class action lawsuit for $15 million. <laughs> All right. Was there adequate consideration for opening the envelope? Before you open, you need to purchase. <laughs> nope. Yeah, so nope. It said the envelope said in, inside, kind of hidden in there, just kind of leaking out a little bit, said, if you open this envelope, you get a new watch. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to a kid, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a little bit sweet. So he sat out through the window? Sat through the window on the envelope. Was there consideration for opening the envelope? Depends on what the rest of it said after. Well, once he opened it up, it said, if you open this envelope and you send us and get a subscription to Time Magazine, which will be 60 per 6 per month, then we'll send you a wonderful new calculator watch. That's really cool. Was there a period at the end of the sentence? And I know this sounds funny, but I, I, it was there a period at the end of the sentence that said, if you open this envelope, you will get a new watch. Did it say period, or was it dot, 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 as in there's more to follow? I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, he was know. a minor, so he couldn't go into that's the right. contract anyway. So let's call him an adult for our matter, okay? Because <laughs> out of the $15 million lawsuit in the class action, there was adults too. That's a good That's good why you went with a class action problem. Just going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else think anything? So was there consideration? I haven't heard a yes or a no. I heard a... I say yes. Yeah. yes. What? I say yes. Okay, you got a yes? Any no? No. No? Why no? Um, because... Consideration probably spelled out in more detail inside that envelope for yeah. what they had to do. Okay. And so they were fulfilling the written part of the contract. And you got a subscription to time, right? And you want to keep your prices low, right? Yeah. Dan, why, why was there consideration? Because it says if you open the envelope, you're going to get a lunch. Okay, and you open the envelope and you want part of that 15 million bucks, right? Not well, just well, if I'm a kid, kid, I want the watch, right? <laughs> no, I want part of the 15 million. I don't care about the watch. Well, the, court lawyer, concluded, the lawyer's going to get the $15 million, right? <laughs> the court concluded that any bargain for act or forbearance will constitute adequate consideration for you on a contract. In this case, the court said, yep, there's consideration. Yeah. All right, so here comes the next question. This is a little bit more interesting. What was the lot result of the lawsuit? A lot. Huh? A lot. What do you guys think? I hope it was a lot. I hope it was just a lot. Did they let him go? Did they say... Guys, there's time sending out junk mail. Come on, you guys have been snookered by this stuff, right? <coughs> Don't we hate people that go through in junk mail even more than we hate attorneys? Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I guess we're done, so. There we go. <coughs> so what was the result? <coughs> Not 15 million? The court dismissed the case, stating that the present case is de minimis, de minimis in the extreme, yes. which you guys would probably agree with. I want to read something here because I thought this was really interesting. And this judge, if you guys want to read a really fun case and see a judge just lay into an attorney and lay into um, someone doing junk mailing at the same time, this was a great case for it. As is so often true in life situations these days, the certificate contained both good news and bad news. The good news was that Joshua could save 66% on the subscription, which might even be tax deductible. Good for him, right? Even more important to the bargain hunter, prices might never be this low again. The bad news was that Time obviously had no intention of giving Joshua the versatile new calculator watch just for opening the envelope. The court goes on. Although most of us, while well, murmuring an appropriate expletive, would have simply thrown away the mailer, and some might have stood on principle and filed this action in small claims court to obtain the calculator, 
Joshua's father did something a little different. He launched a $15 million lawsuit.